If you've been following my channel for the past three or four months, you know I've done a series of videos talking about the new color management functions and abilities in Blender 5.0. But one thing that I haven't really touched on in the color management area is the ability to display HDR data directly within Blender itself, but we can also actually save HDR data in a new way that we could not do in versions prior to Blender 5.0. So we're specifically going to talk about about saving HDR data in PNG format. So in all the videos that I've been doing about the color management, I was focusing on the new view transform abilities we have, for instance, ACES 2.0, but I did a lot of time spent on the new color spaces here under working spaces, for instance, Linear Rec 2020 and ACES CG. But pretty much I did all those videos using sRGB as the display device, and it's the display device that I want to talk about now. So you'll note that when we come over here, we have SDR and HDR. SDR simply stands for Standard Dynamic Range. This is basically the past. It's what monitors would display for color images, where white was capped at a certain range that monitors were capable of displaying in terms of brightness. But modern monitors are capable of displaying much, much greater brightness. And so a relatively low range of their brightness capabilities has been reserved for these standard dynamic range images. But now Blender can incorporate HDR data into its native display abilities. And we have Rec 2100 PQ and Rec 2100 HLG. And there's an important difference between the two. But critically, if you want to render an image and save it out in a view transformed way, and with the HDR data intact, you have to save it as the PNG format once you've switched to one of these display devices. Now the challenge that I'm going to have is that when I switch over to say Rec 2100 PQ, I will see it but my screen recording software will not see it. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples comparing this in Final Cut Pro where I will be able to show you the difference. So stay tuned for that. But just note that if you do want to do your work in HDR and be able to save the final renderings in HDR that you can hand off to somebody else to see, you need to save it in PNG format once you've set the display device to an HDR mode. So as you look at these examples, the first image is SDR and the second is Rec 2100 PQ with an HDR view transform. Since this video is HDR on YouTube, as long as you have a monitor capable of displaying HDR, you should see the difference. Even if you don't, YouTube will stream you an SDR version of the video, which will still show you a relative difference. So let's talk about this just a bit. Let's lay some groundwork to understand what's going on here. So the new PNG format in Blender 5 has become the first general purpose image format to support what we call baked in HDR. It uses the latest PNG specification called coding independent color points or CICP metadata. This tags the file so modern operating systems and applications like Photoshop or web browsers know to bypass the SDR limits and trigger your monitor's HDR mode. So historically, EXR was the file format that was the only way of saving HDR data from Blender. However, EXR is what we call a scene-referred container for raw light and color information. It's a digital negative that requires further processing to look correct. The new HDR PNG is what we call display ready. It applies your view transform like AGX or ACES 2.0 and exposure directly to the file, making it an image you can actually share and view immediately. In fact, this is a critical piece of information to understand. Unlike EXR saved render data, the HDR PNG is view transformed. The view transforms job is to take high precision scene referred render data, which contains light intensities far beyond what any screen can show and map it into what's called a closed domain space. 
Traditionally, this meant squashing all that light into a narrow 0 to 1.0 range of SDR, or standard dynamic range. In that limited space, the ceiling for white is very low, meaning bright details have to be crushed or desaturated to fit. However, when you enable an HDR display device like REC 2100, that ceiling is raised significantly. This allows the view transform to map your render into a much taller domain, more accurately preserving the dynamic range of the source render data. It also gamma corrects the render data with what's called an opto-electronic transfer function. One other quick note, the REC 2100 view transforms use the REC 2020 color space. If you view one of these HDR PNG files on a monitor that supports sRGB or P3, the browser or operating system does an internal conversion to the color space for those more limited devices. So unlike EXR, which uses floating point math to store infinite light values, the HDR PNG format uses 16-bit integer. It's a hybrid approach. It makes the massive dynamic range of a 3D render and bakes it into a fixed high-precision grid of over 65,000 steps of intensity. Think of 16-bit in PNG as a ladder with 65,000 rungs. In SDR, those rungs are crammed into a tiny brightness range, usually 100 to 300 nits. White is capped very quickly, leaving no room for glowing highlights. In HDR, when we're using the REC 2100s, those same 65,000 rungs are stretched across a massive range, anywhere from 500 to 4,000 nits. This allows the integer format to represent the extreme pops of light and detail that were previously only possible in floating point formats. So, in order to trigger this ability in the new PNG format, you just have to convert your display device over to either REC 2100 HLG or REC 2100 PQ. So let's talk about the difference between those two. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. This is the relative standard designed for backwards compatibility. It scales the image based on the display it's being viewed on. Because it's relative, a render will appear noticeably brighter on a high-end 1600-nit MacBook Pro than it will on a 600-nit office monitor. PQ stands for Perceptual Quantizer. This is the absolute standard. It's designed so that a pixel set to 1000 nits will measure exactly 1000 nits on every HDR screen, regardless of the monitor's actual peak capability. PQ is the future-proof cinematic standard used by Netflix and Hollywood to ensure total consistency across display devices. And this is also important if you're going to be importing HDR images into, say, something like Final Cut Pro in an HDR-ready video. You need to make sure and set it to PQ because that's what Final Cut Pro will be expecting. Now remember, even if you save a PNG in HDR mode, you won't see the HDR effect unless your operating system's HDR toggle is turned on. Without it, your computer will clamp these 65,000 values back to a standard 1 to 300 nit range, making your renders look dark and flat. Now on a Mac, HDR just works when the file is open. The Mac OS always has HDR capabilities enabled as soon as an image is displayed on the screen, for instance. But for Windows users, you have to go into your display settings and manually enable HDR. If you don't, Windows will try and squeeze that high-intensity data into a standard range. So just be aware that there are some differences with how the two operating systems handle this. So when we come back over here and we look at the user interface, we can see that under View, we have these different view transforms that are tuned for being in HDR mode. And you can tell, for instance, ASUS 2.0, whether you want to limit that 65,000 range that we talked about to 500 nits or 1,000 or 2,000 or even 4,000 nits. If you come to uh, AGX, AGX has basically a stock 1,000 nit limit, but it works really well. So that's all there is to it once you've set it to one of these. And again, I would recommend going with PQ, then you can just save your PNG file 
And you can test it by dragging it into a browser that's capable of displaying HDR, for instance. The world is increasingly moving in the direction where this is becoming compatible. This PNG format that allows for this HDR data is a very new specification. And so operating systems and software is sort of catching up. But at least on the Mac, the latest versions of Mac OS, you can totally look at these and you can open them in Photoshop, for instance. So this is sort of the wave of the future. I think there are going to be other file formats that will be coming to Blender aside from PNG that will also be able to handle this HDR data.